What makes scary movies so scary? How come some of us enjoy the rush and others cover their eyes? We asked two psychologists on campus, what's the deal, in honor of the very scary season. Meet doctors Chelsea Lovejoy and Michael Mensink, associate professors of psychology here at UW-Stout. There are a lot of different motives for why people enjoy scary movies. One of those motives is the horror high effect or the adrenaline rush you get while watching a movie. For some people too, they have sort of a higher need for stimulation, so um, they have a, a brain that's got a particular baseline level that they like to uh, maintain as far as stimulation goes. So they, um, you know, you might see a lot of overlap with folks that seek out a lot of high adrenaline activities with going to haunted houses or watching horror movies as well. They sort of have a neural system that really uh, enjoys a high level of of uh, stimulation. For others, they might have motives where it's a unique opportunity to explore alternate realities. A lot of movies, scary movies, will highlight the idea of breaking the norms, changing the rules, and imagining a society where you would have the opportunity to try on a new character, such as what would you do in a post-apocalyptic society? Would you have the will to survive? And those situations can be an engaging storyline for an individual to explore. Many movies also tend to focus on scary elements that deal with the idea of the human experience. We'll take monsters that look very human-like in their design, in their movement, but something will be slightly off. In the case of zombie movies, we now have the skin melting or pieces are missing, their walk is going to be a little bit awkward, and that leads us to this sense of the uncanny valley, which is the idea that looks very human-like, but there's just something that's not quite right and that makes tends to make us very uncomfortable and nervous. Because of what we call, you know, emotional contagion or the ways in which we can confuse emotions, context matters uh, a little bit. So um, it can be very easy to misinterpret, um, you know, a, a subtle fear uh, in a movie to a real fear, especially when your body's reacting. So the ways, the cues our bodies give us also tell us a little bit about how we should be interpreting the emotions. When our brain processes experiences, such as when watching a scary movie, our brain can't really tell the difference between physical stressors and emotional stressors. It also tends to not know the difference between different types of emotions you might be feeling. For example, the fear that you have while watching a scary movie also is activating the same part of, brain, of the brain that processes anger and sexual arousal, which can lead to some very confusing emotions depending on how your brain decides to, or exciting emotions, depending on how your brain decides to process that. At the brain level, if we look at, at sort of what's going on as far as um, different hormones and neurotransmitters, um, adrenaline is obviously gonna be released if we're sort of uh, becoming afraid to the point where we are having a fight or flight response. And um, that's one aspect of it. And then there's a dopamine release, which is our rewarding uh, neurotransmitter. Um, that kind of provides a, a pleasurable uh, response for having, you know, sometimes when we have a fear experience, but it's in a safe way, then we kind of have that pleasure response. So that's that can be kind of a good feeling when the movie ends. Those feelings of fear that you might develop while watching it may then later be misattributed to the person that you went to the movie with. If you are on a date with somebody in that situation, those feelings of fear may now be misattributed to feelings of arousal towards that person. And while they may have only been mildly attractive before, you may find them extremely attractive and definitely want to go on a second date with them in the future. So like any type of, of story or, or fictional story, um, it can be a very normal part of human uh, cognition and human emotional experience to um, read or watch uh, these types of movies. Um, assuming that you know a person's sort of uh, healthy otherwise and able to, again, accurately understand fiction or fantasy from reality. In some cases, watching too many scary movies could be unhealthy for an individual, particularly in the case when the content is related to real-world situations such as crime or murder. For some individuals, watching large amounts of content may actually increase their perception of how much crime or how much murder is going on in the world and may make them feel unsafe. There's, you know, always a, a few uh, individuals, a very, very few that might have difficulty distinguishing uh, reality from uh, fantasy. So, um, you know, horror movies might, might cause issue with that. But for the vast majority of people, horror movies would be a totally fine way to uh, 
spend you know an evening if you're in, into that type of experience. And if not, then there's plenty of other types of movies to go to, right? So. <laughs>